Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. This podcast is being sponsored by Get Loopy. On episode 41, you can hear the story of Isabel, the co-founder and CEO. Get Loopy. Get a 20% discount off your first order. Get loopy.com. Take it from the Iron Woman. So we have already heard from John Beatty, the Superman who climbed all the seven highest mountains in the world. Then we heard from Aileen on her experience with me actually on Kilimanjaro. And I was surprised when she mentioned, do you remember this? Do you remember that? I was like, she must have been on a different trip. No, actually, we were on the same trip. So today I want to share my experience that I had to climb Kilimanjaro. As we all know, Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest point in Africa. And it had been on my bucket list for many years. And Nelson Mandela says, after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. So Aileen, my running partner and good friend, asked me to join her to climb. I quickly agreed. Anything out of the ordinary was fine with me. It felt like when I signed up for the Kilimanjaro trip. I'm a risk taker, even though I don't consider myself a huge risk taker. I take on risks to overcome my fears and conquer my insecurities. It is easy to sign up for something, but when reality hits, it really hits. It was time to sign up for that big trip to Africa. I had been to Africa a few years before with a group of my Swiss Airlines employee at that time. We were going hiking for three days, carrying most of our belongings. I thought I was ready for the next trip to go to the bigger height. The packing was more challenging as we were not exactly allowed to bring our whole household. In a way, this was freeing as there was little space in the tent. The more things I took with me, the less space and comfort I would have when I slept. Packing was a very big production for me. I understood that there would be no stores along our hiking route, so everything had to be properly planned in advance. From my hiking days in Switzerland, I was well prepared to bring little, but always warm gears. I'm always cold, so the Mount Kilimanjaro trip sounded more than just an adventure in the Swiss Alps. So my recollection of that trip is like upon arrival in Africa, we were brought into a five-star hotel to ease us into the trip. Luxury would diminish day by day. On the first few evenings, when I had to go to the toilet tent, I was afraid of bizarre animals following me there. I remember the story of the gecko. A little gecko traumatized her. So we were both city girls, but what kind of an adventure would we have if we were already scared of a tiny creature? The nights actually were very cold and clear, and one night there was snow falling close to the top. I certainly enjoyed some memorable moments alone outside. Yes, I had to get up a few times. We were a group of six very fit people. It was so much fun as everyone was easy to get along with and no one brought the drama with them. Each day we would hike for about three to five hours and the climb was fairly relaxed. Each hour we would stop for a break to hydrate and eat and the pace was on the slower side. Go slow to go fast. And in the local language, this means pole, pole. Slow was the way to go, one step in front of the next. There was no rushing. We knew we had enough time. We picked an easier route, and we even had a day in a lower altitude to accommodate 
to get used to the high altitude. So each night we checked our heart rate, pulse and oxygen level to make sure we were all healthy and fit for the summit. Since I was always cold, I was on the very low end of the spectrum. The guide said, yeah, now it's better time to take those altitude pills. So I took them and everything was much better. So if you look at the history in 2008, a CIA agent died from altitude sickness just 20 yards or 18 meters short of the summit. Oof, I wanted to summit. And in 2015, the very fit and young 33-year-old Scott Dinsmore was killed from a falling rock. Dinsmore, the CEO of Live Your Legend, was on the mountain as part of his commitment to living his dream fully. His infectious energy, smile, passion and fearlessness can only inspire all of us. I remember seeing pictures from Mount Everest where people would put their nation's flag on the top of their tents. So I brought a little Swiss flag with me. Each evening when we arrived at our new location for the night, I put up my flag on the outside of our tent. This is also what Aileen remembers. All the tents looked alike and I felt a little directionally challenged. I did not want to enter the wrong tent. And each night, again, John said that, Eileen said that, we would play Uno. That was really the game that everybody knew. It was easy. It was fun. We had a lot of fun with everybody. Finally, we reached the top. In the morning, it was snowing and the landscape looked just magic. In the final 45 minutes, we hiked on a gradual incline towards the top. The finish line was in sight, finally. I was counting my steps. I was hard to count for me to a hundred. So I counted in smaller increments. I counted to ten and I started again. I counted to ten and I started again. This was all I could do at this point. My brain capacity was limited, it seems like. When we arrived, the view of the little snow that was left was breathtaking. It was simply an amazing experience. The summit was only a little space with many colorful flags. There was no restaurant and no souvenir stores, as many of my friends had wondered. For a quiet but happy celebratory 20 minutes, we stood on top of the highest mountain in Africa. All of our group members made it. We were all proud of what was likely our biggest accomplishment for the year. We reached our goals with bravado. My coachable moment was I was fascinated by the honesty and openness of the guides, their flexibility as they talked to each participant with ease and passion, and their ability to make this venture fun for all of us. They gave us the impression that it was their first time as well. They were enthusiastic and optimistic, and they were proud of our successful ascent. When they learned that I was a coach, they asked me, if I could coach them. Sure. I replied that it would be my pleasure and honor. It was not until the last day that we found the time to do so. Coaching usually is done while sitting down or on the phone. So now let's do that while walking. I conducted our session while we were walking downhill in the forest. So one of the guides wanted to know, tell me, what can I do to become a better guide? I asked a few questions seeking to learn about him and how he thought he could better help his many international guests feel at ease. More of the stories you can read actually in my book, Take It From The Iron Woman, Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. There are more adventures, skydiving, surfing, just to name a few. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Chime in. There's something for everybody. And don't forget to order Get Loopy. You get 20% off of your first order. Take it from the Iron Woman is a book and also coaching is available. What will you take away from this hike to Kilimanjaro? Are you ready to sign up? Take it from the Iron Woman. We see you next time. Thank you for listening.